All right, question is who or what is the devil? Oh my goodness, it's you. And it essentially comes <laughs> down to, uh, am I gonna put myself above everyone else? Am I gonna brush a fly off my forehead? <laughs> All right. What happens after we die? How does prayer actually work? What's heaven like, or hell for that matter? On this show, we interviewed Christian ministers from a Swedenborgian denomination to explore the biggest philosophical and religious questions of all time. Join us for some big spiritual questions. <laughs> Who's the devil? Anytime that we give into the love of self, we're manifesting the devil a little bit. The New Church doesn't hold that there is a separate entity running hell. In fact, the New Church holds that it is the Lord who is the God of hell, which sounds strange. And yet, would you want it any other way? Would you want someone down there plotting your demise? I think I'm much happier believing in a God who is governing everything. There aren't corners where the divine has no reach. There's a remarkably large amount of mythology about the devil that people, I think, think is somewhere in the Bible, but so much of it is not actually biblical. It's from some other tradition, or it's from, you know, fiction, like uh, Milton's Paradise Lost, which a whole bunch of hay made out of not a whole lot. So one example being the idea of Satan being a fallen angel is based mostly on uh, a place in Isaiah talking about someone trying to get up high and then being cast down. Lucifer, son of the morning. People say, aha, see, that was uh, an angel and he was cast down and he became the devil. No, just read in context. Read a little bit before, read a little bit after, see if you can figure out what's going on. It's talking about the king of Babylon. It's not talking about um, some supernatural being. So I, the devil is real. I do believe uh, Satan exists, uh, but I don't think of Satan as a, uh, a single one being who is like the, the hellish equivalent of God. My reading of it, my understanding of it, is that the devil or Satan refers to uh, evil spirits acting in concert with one another, acting together. Uh, there's a, a, a passage from the New Testament where it talks about how uh, there's a demon-possessed man and Jesus comes and talks to the demon and says, what's, what's your name? And the demon says, my name is Legion for we are many. At first it seems like, well, there's just this one guy, this one, one demon, but the reality is it's, it's a bunch of spirits from hell acting together to, to cause harm. It is sometimes easier for a human brain to wrap its mind around a person than a concept and the idea of the devil is useful for that. So when Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, again, it's a personification. He obviously doesn't think that Peter is literally Satan. It's a personification for the purpose of establishing an enemy instead of just saying like, mm, maybe bad things we kind of shouldn't do, right? It's more powerful language. It's more motivating language to speak of the devil or Satan that we are to shun or to avoid. In the new church, the understanding of Satan or the devil, they're different loves. The devil or the diabolical is representative of the love of ourselves. And that shows up in the lust of domination or the lust for power, um, needing to get our way all the time. That is a diabolical thing. I don't know of anyone that actually worships Satan. Uh, I just, I think that those people are so minuscule in number that no, we don't need to be scared of them. I mean, we should be scared for them about the ways that they're messing up their life, trying to devote it to literal evil. But the organization that has named itself Satanism is more a political organization than anything else using the political framework of religious protection to protect people that are not otherwise being protected. 
And a big part of it is a kickback against the abuses they have seen from religious organizations. So they have antagonistically named themselves Satanism. And I'm not an expert on Satanism, but that's my understanding of the organization. Hey there, pardon the interruption. Just wanted to say that we made a web page that will give more context to this question. Also, we'll have an ongoing FAQ section to respond to repeated YouTube comments as they come in and allow you to contact us directly with a guaranteed response from a real person. We want community and connection. So click on the link below and we'll see you there. Now back to the show. Satan represents the love of the world, that willingness to get stuff at any cost. And it's not just physical stuff, but also reputation, honors, um, praises. The word Lucifer means the light bearer, which is kind of interesting, right? That that, that idea that sometimes those things that have a demonic influence uh, over our lives can feel like they're filled with light can feel like, oh, this is really it, can sort of have that tintillating feel to them that draws us in, much as a moth to flame. I think that's that's a Lucifer part. And the other one, Satan. Satan literally means the accuser. I mean, that's interesting too, right? That I, that idea that that what's the voice in our head that's the accuser? And and you wanna you wanna know how hell works in your life? Just share this question. If you could get rid of one voice in your head, what would it be? Great small group question to have. And and I hear we use that a lot in our small groups. And that really gets you in tune with how hell is kind of playing with you because that voice that you would most get rid of, that is not God's voice. And that voice is not God's will. Because once we get rid of that voice, like who are you when that voice isn't there? You're at peace. You're able to be with people. Life is filled with a lot of joy. Mine is I'm stupid, you know, and that, right. Most people don't know what our voice, yours, do more. Do more. Do, right. There you go. Right. That's not God. When these things rule in us, yeah, we are manifesting a little bit of what is satanic. We're manifesting a bit of what is diabolical. The message of the Lord is that we contend with these things. I mean, look at the image of the Lord in the wilderness, battling temptations. It's represented as him dueling with the devil, but really, as we understand it, the Lord was coming up against a lot of the own, his own doubts, the things that he had to wrestle with as he was going about his mission. You see, the Lord dealt with that and shows us how we can move forward. I don't think we need a devil to see hell in this world. So, what do you think? Comment your thoughts below or click on the link in the description to go to our website and contact us directly. If you want to support us, likes, comments, and subscriptions, as you know, are perfect. This show, just so you know, is produced by the General Church of the New Jerusalem, a branch of Swedenborgianism commonly known as the New Church. Our religion holds the Bible sacred and uses the writings of Emanuel Swedenborg to help distill its stories and parables beyond the literal scripture. If you're curious, no pressure, the link's in our description. Or, you know, just uh, watch more videos. 